Well, hello again, bookworms, and welcome to another vlog from my car. <laughs> Today I'm vlogging the 10 books that I read in November. Um, and I'm vlogging from my car because I spent all day painting my bathroom and just ran out of time to film this today. So I'm now sitting in my car in a car park um, while my daughter's at dance. But that's life, isn't it? <laughs> Them's the breaks. Still bringing you the same amazing content um, and being a very professional vlogger as usual. So, <laughs> so without further ado, grab yourself a cup of something delicious and a snack and get comfortable and let's talk books so the first book that i finished in november i uh, actually started it in october but I didn't include it in that vlog because I wasn't finished by the end of October, but um, I finished Firestarter by Stephen King early in November. And this is only my second Stephen King book ever. And I actually read it for Halloween thinking it's horror, but it actually isn't. I would say this is more of a sci-fi thriller. Um, so it's about a a government agency that is conducting scientific research um, in inverted commas their experiments on um, volunteers who aren't exactly informed of what they're signing up for so you can see there's a bit of dodginess here but um, the volunteers basically have their brain chemistry altered so they can um, perform ESP um, and you know move things with their mind um, and do these strange manipulations with their minds um, and then the agency kind of follows them up and studies them and basically the book begins when two of these participants um, they actually meet at the study and get together and get married and a few years later they have a baby and to everyone's surprise um the baby charlie ends up having esp powers so she can actually manipulate things with her mind and start fires with her mind so um basically we follow charlie and charlie's mum um because the agency has found out that this child exists they want her so they want to a experiment on her and see what she can do and they also think she has potential as a weapon so um her value as a weapon um which is really terrifying <laughs> and they try and naturally get hold of this child at all costs and they end up um a bit of a spoiler here but they kill her mother so it's just dad and charlie trying to hide from this agency um and yeah the story goes from there um i really loved this book um i loved it in the way that it really makes you think about ethical questions surrounding medical research and surrounding um you know the rights of a child versus the rights of the adults who have advocacy over that child and you know um what the motivations of the agency or whether they're doing things for safety or whether they're doing things for money or when, when there's manipulation involved um and i really love this book and stephen king again writes amazing characters and I'd always wanted to read Firestarter and I'm so glad I did and now I want to see the movie as well because apparently there's an older style movie and there's a more recent movie that's just come out but I'd really like to see what they did with this book um, converting it into a movie as well. So yeah highly recommend. Um, I gave it four out of five. It was probably a four and a half out of five um, but yeah I loved Firestarter. Well worth the read. Well worth the read. 
Okay, so in October, I also finished Futari Escape 2, which was a manga comic that I bought in Japan. And when I went to the bookshop in Japan, I'd never heard of this manga before, but it looked really cute. So I thought I'd give it a go. And um, unfortunately, the, the bookstore only had issue number two in English. So I went, OK, that's fine. I'll just start at two. Um, and after reading it and loving it so much, I went on Amazon and bought one, three and four as well. Um, so in November, I actually read one and three and they are every bit as good as the first one I bought. So Futari Escape. Futari is like the counting word for two people. It means two people. Um, so Futari Escape is basically about two female flatmates who live together and one of them is a mangaka, a um, manga creator, an artist, and the other one is unemployed. Um, and the manga creator is um, a very hard worker and sometimes pushes herself so hard to finish her deadlines that she doesn't allow time for herself to rest and relax. So her flatmate invents all of these ways to kind of encourage her to have fun and um, forget about work and take a break. And it's basically about, it's a, it's a manga about friendship and um, Shoichi Taguchi really has created this beautiful relationship between these two girls because it's it's really just about the fun you get up to with your friends um together that's just silly but ends up being uh, creating an amazing memory so it's like the things that you do when you you make up an activity out of nothing so each little chapter is something that the two girls get up to when the flatmate wants to sort of distract um, the artist from her work and her deadlines and make her relax and have fun and the fun and memories you make together. So it's just super cute. It's super innocent and wholesome. Um, and I loved it so much. I can't wait for number four to come out. And if you haven't tried reading manga before, um, this one's a really, really good one to start off with because it's super easy to read. Um, it's really sweet and wholesome. And there's like a little diagram in the front of the manga that sort of shows you how to read the tiles, what order to, order to read them in. Um, so that if you're not familiar, you, you know how to kind of um, navigate manga, the, the manga um, straight away. Um, yeah, I'd really recommend Futari Escape um, if you can find it. I know I got my copies on Amazon. Um, so, but if you're looking on manga websites, um, they are out there. Um, just make sure you get them translated into the language that, that you are comfortable reading in because originally they're in Japanese. So if you don't read Japanese, um, just find them in a translated uh, version. There are lots of translations of it, I found anyway. So, hey, the fourth book that I read in November, and actually was another one I started in October. Um, but I didn't finish it till November and it was also a Stephen King. It's called Bag of Bones. Um, this one was horror, definitely horror. So it's about a writer whose wife passes away suddenly and he he's grieving and he, he's lost his ability to write. Um, he's suffering writer's block just from the trauma of losing his wife and his grief. So he decides to move back to their summer house um, and just take some time off. But while he's living in this summer house in a small town, um, it's on a big lake and he soon finds out the house is actually really haunted. So um, he's living in this big old haunted house. And then aside from that, um, he also meets one day by chance in the town, a young girl called Matty and her daughter Kyra. Um, and that that triggers a whole chain of events in the town um, that we find out later is actually also linked to the haunting in his house. So, um, oh gosh, this this book was quite hard to read at times, I have to say. Um, it, it has body horror. It has 
racial violence, it has domestic violence, um, you know, the, the horror of ghosts and the, the supernatural. Um, yeah, it's, so it's, it's got it all in there. And a trigger warning, it does have a rather um, violent uh, rape scene as well. So just watch out for those if, if that's not for you. Um, so, yeah, uh, I was it was hard to read. <laughs> it was actually, especially towards the end, I found the end really hard to read. Um, but it was a great read and very challenging. And the thing I found really this is sort of undercurrent of horror as well in this book which I found really you put my teeth on edge was um the the underlying sexism and misogyny and um just the threat to the constant threat to this poor young vulnerable woman and her little girl the whole time like you just always uh, the, the hairs on the back of my neck always stood up because there was just this undercurrent of predatory behavior by the men in the town and including the protagonist, which was kind of weird. I found too, this kind of predatory, um, undercurrent to the way that all the men in the town, um, treated this poor vulnerable woman and her little girl. And I just found that absolutely chilling. Um, yeah so it made me very very uncomfortable i still give it a four out of five um the characters were amazing the story was really good um it went i didn't think it would go where it went <clears throat> and um yeah just just be careful with this one because there's a lot of triggers in it but yeah definitely horror definitely gave me the chills um yeah i i was like cringing <laughs> in a lot of it um and it, the end is very hard to read so yeah, recommend um, another amazing Stephen King book, but just be careful with this one. <laughs> this is a little side side warning. <laughs> okay, the fifth book, the fifth book that I read in November, um, which I was really excited about, was After the Forest by Kel Woods, and um, I mentioned in my last vlog that actually no, Kel, um, Kel and I applied for our first casual library jobs together at the same library um, about 12 years ago um, and so I've worked with Kel um, I don't I don't obviously I have a different job now but we've stayed in touch and um, so I was really really excited when I found out that she'd found a publisher for her book and um, I've been watching the progress of this book and I was so excited to read it and then finally it came out and I got my hands on a copy and oh, it was so worth the wait. It was so worth the wait. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, the whole thing is just a, it's a sensory overload, this book. It's, it's got magic and fairy tales and the woods and animals and um, animism and it's just it's brilliant. I, I really enjoyed it. I'm not just saying that because I because I know Kel. Um, I don't have to say any of this. So, um, but basically, this is this is um, the story that happens after the fa fairy tale of Hansel and Gretel. So, Greta and Hans um, are now adults and they've grown up, and it's what's happened in their lives after the Hansel and Gretel fairy tale happened with the gingerbread house and the witch and um so Greta is now um baking this amazing gingerbread uh which has magical powers so we've constantly I mean you read this book and you can just smell that gingerbread you know like that it's so sensual and sensory and and the descriptions are so beautiful you can smell it through the pages it's amazing um so she's doing that to support her brother um their father is no longer in the picture their mother is no longer in the picture and uh her brother has turned to gambling and drinking so he hasn't um chosen a, a very positive path after that happened to them so um basically this is this is a fairy tale at its very best. So if you're looking for a fantasy fairy tale with witches and magic and alchemy um, and people changing into animals and 
it's just brilliant. Like, um, a lot, I saw a lot of criticism of, <coughs> excuse me, online of, um, Kel's main character, Greta, and that she's kind of two dimensional, um, which I, I kind of agree, sort of, like I get where they're coming from, but also I think the way that Greta is described, um, it's very uh, optimistic and very um, kind of, she's very naive. And I think, I think that kind of keeps, is in keeping with the genre, like the fairy tale genre. When you think about fairy tale main characters, um, they are kind of idealized, aren't they? They're, and they are kind of two dimensional. Um, and I read that into the story. Um, I read into Greta that she is a fairy tale main character. This is a fairy tale. It's, you know, um, it's not a modern domestic story. She is a fairy tale character. Um, and I think personally, in my opinion, that the way that Kel has created her as a character, um, I think it's in keeping with the genre. I, I think I think she's done a fantastic job. Um, and I really enjoyed this book. I gave it a four out of five. Um, I, I didn't see where it was going. Um, so, you know, I mean, if you love a really sensual fantasy, dreamland, magical, um, it was really a perfect October read for Halloween, actually. No, I kind of nailed it with the timing. <laughs> but yeah, if you, um, if you, if that's what you're looking for and you love those style of books, highly recommend After the Forest by Kel Woods. Um, pick it up, give it a go. It's, it's brilliant. It's really good. Kel, I loved it. It was really good. Okay. So the next four books that I read, um, we had to make an emergency trip up to New South Wales um for my father-in-law he was really unwell um so we had to make a really uh, emergency trip up um so it was a bit stressful in november and um the journey up to new south wales to see our relatives is it's a nine and a half hour drive um without stopping <laughs> so we but we stop a lot obviously so it's all day so um I, I'm going to put these four books together because they're four short uh, novellas that I read in my car uh, via Audible while I was driving. Um, and I chose short kind of lighter novels because of the headspace I was in at the time. Obviously, um, you're in kind of uh, worry mode <laughs> and I didn't want anything too taxing. Um, so I listened to these books, uh, driving from Melbourne to Sydney and then from Sydney back to Melbourne, um, well, after we'd been there for a few days and he's fine. Um, just to report, he's, he's okay. Um, anyway, so the first book I listened to was Cotswold Christmas by Kate, Kate Hewitt. Um, the second book I listened to was Clean Slate by Zoe Foster Blake. Um, then I listened to The Summer Melt by Emily March, I think it's Emily March, and Trapdoor by J.P. Pomare. Um, so, um, Cotswold Christmas, you know, cosy Christmas romance story, super cute, um, exactly what I needed. It was just light-hearted, um, an easy read sweet wholesome characters and I really liked it it was lovely um I don't think I'll read the rest of the series I think it's a there's a series of uh Kate Hewitt's Cotswold books but I don't think I'll read the other ones but I was in the mood for the Christmas one so it was really nice and I read that I think I gave it a three out of five um Clean Slate by Zoe Foster Blake it was excellent it's basically an exploration of what happens in relationships after someone cheats um it's the characters are Australian it's set in Australia um and I thought this one was really cool it was really interesting and it's written really well it's really believable um the way that the arguments between the couple play out 
I really liked it. Um, I recommend it. It was, it was great. Um, so I give that one a four out of five. Um, Summer Melt is a romance, not my cup of tea. It, I, in fact, I probably would have DNF'd it if I hadn't been a captive audience because I was driving and I couldn't touch my phone um, to find another audiobook. So I did, I did listen to the whole thing, um, but I just found it kind of a bit twee and a bit predictable and a bit far-fetched. I didn't really, <laughs> I didn't really connect with the characters and I, I kind of felt like, yeah, no one says that. That would never happen. <laughs> I don't know, maybe, maybe I'm just um, uh, too world-weary and <laughs> uh, maybe if you're a bit more optimistic, <laughs> you'd really like this one. This this one wasn't wasn't my cup of tea, really. I think I gave it two. Um, yeah, I wouldn't listen to any more um, like this one. But if, if romance, if like wholesome romance, you know, um, is your cup of tea. It's very sweet. It's a very sweet book. So, um, and then the fourth one that I listened to on the way back was Trapdoor by J.P. Pomare. And this was a thriller. Um, and our main character wakes up in a completely blackened room. She doesn't know how she's gotten there or where she is or why she's there. Um, but she wakes up asleep on the floor in a pitch black room. And then she finds out that she's not alone. There are other people in the room and they also don't know why they're there. Um, or she doesn't, she doesn't know the other people. Um, they don't seem to have any connection. They don't know why they're there. They can't see anything. And the room is gradually filling up with water. So this uh, book plays out over the next sort of 24 hours when um, the main character and the other characters wake up in this room and then have to work out why they're there, where they are and how to get out. So it was a really interesting um, story and um, I think it's told really, really well. It was, it was um, an interesting situation and an interesting scenario and um, this was a really good one actually to listen to in the car because I, I listened to it all in one hit um, because normally with audio books you know you listen to them during the day and in bits and pieces as you're walking or washing or doing whatever washing up but because I happened to be in the car on a long car trip I listened to it all in one chunk and just binge the whole thing and that was actually really cool like because it sort of played out over the whole time um like over the 24-hour period and I binged the whole thing at once so um yeah that was really cool um I like that one so uh, I think I gave it a three and a half or a four out of five um and it was really enjoyable it was a really um the ending I I was it, the ending's a little bit disappointing but but that might just be me that might just be my my opinion but I did actually like the the book and I did like the story so and finally the last book that I read in November was Grace is Gone by Emily Elgar um so the scenario in this book is that um, we have Meg, who's the mother of Grace, and Grace has complex medical needs, um, and her mum is her carer, Meg, and one day their next door neighbour walks in to the house and discovers that Meg has been murdered and Grace is missing. Um, all she finds is Grace's wheelchair tipped over, um, and Meg has been murdered, and no one knows where Grace has gone um, and obviously it's very imperative that they find her quickly because she uh, needs a lot of medication on a regular basis so um, not only are we trying to find out what's happened but we're trying to find where Grace has gone um, so that they can find out if she's still alive and um, you know get medical attention to her pretty quickly. Um, this book without giving too much away <laughs> um has a really good twist um oh i want to yeah i'm not even gonna i'm not even gonna liken it to other books 
or um, Netflix specials, Netflix series, because um, that might have been enough to kind of spoil it. But I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, it it was amazing. It's really good. And um, I don't even know why I picked this up. I I, I can't remember why. Um, I grabbed this. I, I think I got it from a secondhand bookshop and I can't remember why this particular book grabbed me, um, but it's a thriller um, and it's sort of thriller mystery actually. And um, yeah, it was really good. Right, so that's all the books that I read in November. Uh, next month, I'll of course do all the books I read in December. Because if you've been following along, I'm only reading books that I own at the moment as opposed to library books. Um, I'm, I'm doing a challenge. You, you'll see a couple of vlogs back where I talk about that. So I'm not borrowing any library books at the moment. I'm only reading books that I own. Um, so I have pulled a few, selected a few books off that kind of feel a bit Christmassy and feel a bit of a summer vibe um, and I have a TBR pile that I might share with you guys in the next vlog um, and I you know as you may have heard <laughs> November has been a bit stressful it's been a little bit of a uh, month where I found it hard to read um, but like a beacon like a superhero the superhero she is um lo and behold right when i needed her in flies jilly cooper with a brand new book that i kind of had heard rumors about but i had no idea it had actually been published and right when i need her here she is she's come out with a new book so of course i bought it immediately um it's called tackle and so the double entendre titles tend to be Jilly's bag. That's uh, her MO. Um, and Tackle is about a soccer team, a English football team. Um, and I've started reading it and it is classic JC magic. Classic Cooper magic. It's exactly what I was looking for. Um, I was so excited when this came out. So this will be my first uh, December read um, right in the nick of time <laughs> um, and I, I'll follow that with um, the other reads that I complete in December um, and I'll do that in January but yeah I will I will uh, post a vlog next week um, and it'll be a bit Christmassy themed and I'll also um, share my my projected TBRs for Christmas and the summer period so you can see what I'm planning to read and if I get around to them all right um so that's another what I read this month vlog I hope you enjoyed it um comment down below if you've read any of the books that I mentioned and enjoyed them or comment down below what you happen to be reading at the moment I'd love to hear what you're reading um I will go and pick my daughter up from dance class now and go home and make dinner. And I hope you do something nice for yourself this weekend. I think it's going to be a rainy, cozy weekend. Um, perfect for putting our Christmas tree up and maybe making some gingerbread and reading. I think sounds like that's what we're going to get up to. So, all right, take care, bookworms. Love you so much. Thanks for being here and I'll see you in the next vlog.